what's better than doing astrophotography on your own? Well, having someone to share the night sky with would definitely be in my top three. But what if the pair of you are at opposite sides of the Atlantic Ocean? Could you still image together? The answer is yes, absolutely. And today I'm so excited to say that I'm going to be working with Nico from over at Nebula Photos on YouTube for the second time ever on this channel. Just like last time on the Cygnus wall, we're going to be imaging the same target from over a thousand miles apart. And then we're going to come together to compile the data on Zoom. Only this time we're both shooting through filters and we're both shooting through monochrome cameras. This is going to be amazing. <laughs> highlights of the conversation I had with Nico planning our imaging session. So, um, we're going to do another challenge. Uh, we are. Object, right? And Number two. Wh what have you picked? So, last time you picked Cygnus Wall, and that was super, super fun. And I thought that I would pick a target that is accessible equally to both of us for a long period of time so we have enough time to gather our data obviously due to weather conditions and stuff so i have chosen the elephant trunk nebula which i thought was a really really nice target for both of us and i've looked up the field of views that we're going to be working with so my longer focal length and your shorter focal length and it actually works out really nice Nice. Yeah. The, and that's an exciting one since you're new to mono because it's one of those objects mm. that's like actually sort of hard in color because it's just like it doesn't have like great separation until you add the narrowband mm. channels. And then you really see like, yeah, the elephant trunk sort of like pop out from the blue background. But like that's really hard to get, I think, with a color camera. Yeah, Mono's completely new to me. So I think, because last time you were working with Mono, and now I think that we're both working with Mono, it's a really good chance for me to learn more about it, seeing as I've literally just started. So it is quite good. And I'm going to be shooting Hydrogen Alpha. And we were talking about you maybe shooting Sulfur, and you were saying, because I assumed that adding Sulfur was just going to make it into a Hubble palette image with, you know, the normal HAS2 and O3. But you were saying that sulfur could possibly add in some more detail, and I was really intrigued by that. Yeah, I've been playing around. Um, you, you know that I, I have this big mosaic in Cygnus, and that's sort of like I get mm. so much data for that that it, but that it's sort of like my testing ground for like playing around with different ideas. And I've been playing around with like yeah. just um, sort of more complex palettes and adding sulfur into both. Uh, the red and the mm. blue in different ways. And it it can give it um, sort of like more dimension to the reds, like sort of like get those sort of transitions from um, pinks to deeper mm. reds and things like that by, by adding in sulfur and just makes the image a little bit more dynamic while still looking um, more like a HOO or a, a natural color palette. So you mentioned uh, earlier that we're going to be shooting this with the same camera, but two different telescopes. And mine is a lot more wide field while yours is more narrow field. Um, so let's actually take a look at how that looks, sort of pre-visualize it uh, to give people an idea and also, also us an idea. Let's see here. All right, so there's your field of view and there's mine. Cool. And if we move it around now. It's quite a start. So I'll probably, I'll probably center the, the elephant trunk two yep. um but i might i might go like that just because i think um i might like to get like a widescreen mm. um uh, with the elephant trunk you're like also going to be able to, you're going to be able to create another image <laughs> seeing almost half of the circle of nebulosity as well so i think that's a really good opportunity right. to get some more data as well yeah 100 percent. i think it's going to be amazing and also it's more forgiving when you're going to the target because you've got like a wider space. So if it does overlap a little bit, then that's totally fine because we have the space to 
be forgiving right. for that. Officially outside shooting now and on the elephant's trunk, which is super exciting. It's about eight o'clock and the nights were just getting darker and darker, which is really useful for a quick setup time. So Nico is going to be shooting at a wide, much wider focal length than I am. I'm focusing specifically on the trunk and I was doing some framing earlier and I decided to go for a vertical framing. I decided on this composition as there's a lovely train of dark dust next to it and I really really wanted to get that in and sort of show it as a main piece of the image and I thought that's one way I can do it. The moon is also sitting big and bright tonight in the sky at 78% illumination I believe but that's all good because it's at the other end of the sky and I'm shooting through an HA filter. For those who don't know an HA filter blocks out moonlight completely unlike O3 filters which are more susceptible to letting the light in. I'd normally film a lot more during an imaging session but I'd like this video to be focused more on Nico and I chatting about the actual data that we've captured. If you haven't subscribed to Nico already, where have you been? His YouTube channel is absolutely amazing for all levels of astrophotographers or even if you're just interested in space. He was one of my first subs when I joined the hobby. Please make sure to go over and give him a subscribe and also watch his half of this collab, it's going to be amazing. It's the next day now and I've got all of the data here that Nico and I have captured over the course of the past month really. It's been, I've got my HA data over to the left here. In the middle, I've got Nico's S2 and on the right, I've got Nico's O3 data. And originally we were gonna just combine HA and O3 together and obviously that is still possible. But I'm so curious to see what we can create with the more common Hubble palette look. So I'm just going to combine them and show you how I'm going to combine them in PixInsight and then take you through one of my processing tips that I like to give out for users of PixInsight that's been really, really helpful for me in all of my workflows. So I've already put into pixel math where I would like um, the images to be. So the red channel is going to house the S2 data, the green channel is going to house the HA data and the blue channel is going to house the O3 data. And this is for that generic Hubble palette look that we all know and love. Originally, I was going to go for something more unique but that can come when we play around with the colors. I really am intrigued to see what this is gonna look like. So if we make sure that create new image is ticked and the color space is RGB color, I'm gonna click the square here and that's gonna create a new image in the form of the Hubble palette. Look how cool it looks, oh my God. So you'll notice that the stars are quite pink and some people like to keep those in their images. Again, editing is subjective. So this by no means means that you have to remove your pink stars in your post-processing techniques. But for instance, if I'd like to remove them and get them sort of down to a more natural color, I can make sure this image is selected come up to image and then invert. And that's gonna show up the pink stars as a green color. We can then come into SCNR, click color to remove as green. And I normally have it maybe about 0.6 to start with. I want to bump down the aggressiveness just so that I have more control over the process. And you can see that's removed the majority of the green. I might like to do it once more, even less this time. Click on the square. That looks pretty good to me. And then if we come back up to image and invert, absolute magic. <laughs> you can see that the pink stars have now disappeared and the image is revealing much more of a natural look, which I love. I think it looks really good. I'm itching to see what Nico's come up with and share the data with him. So let's jump on Zoom and see what he's up to. Hey, Helena. Hi, Nico, how's it going? Good. So for the viewers, it's now October 17th. So we started this Four collaboration months? a long time ago in terms of our first <laughs> conversation. We did. We've not done too badly, though. I feel like four months is pretty yeah. good. Pretty good. Proud yeah, of I us. Mean, for, we're both in uh, areas of the, the world where cloud cover can last for months, it feels like sometimes. It feels like it never ends sometimes. Yeah. It's just like, oh, do I move to get a clear sky or do I have to stay here? 
<laughs> Within the four months, you captured your sulfur and I, you captured your sulfur in your oxygen and I actually just captured um, my hydrogen on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a couple of days <laughs> and now we're recording so it's a pretty quick turnaround and that just shows like how long cloud can go on for but I'm really really pleased that we're continuing this on and we've started it kind of earlier than I thought we would actually I thought we'd be clouded out for a lot longer than this yeah and I think in the first conversation we talked about like ratios a little bit and so we, we ended did, up yeah. with um I got a, about four and a four and a little bit uh, mm. of each O3 and S2 and you got three of HA, which Three I think is a pretty HA. good ratio, like because HA is stronger, and so it, it works out pretty well. Awesome. So, do you uh, are you ready to reveal yours? Do you want me to do mine first? <laughs> Up to you. What, what do you think? I can do. <laughs> yeah, I'll do mine first if you want me okay. to do. <laughs> can you see that? Yes. Awesome. So I went Hubble palette. And originally I was like, no, I'm not going to be like everyone else. I'm not going to do Hubble palette. <laughs> um, but I remember we had a conversation and you said that you felt like the elephant's trunk looked, it looked the best in Hubble palette. And um, I totally agree, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. Um, I really love how like the gold kind of merged into the blue and the gold's obviously goldy, brown, orangey. I don't really know what that colour is, to be honest. It's representing the hydrogen and obviously the blue is representing the oxygen. And you can see, like, the dimension and that comes from your sulphur data. Like, it was utterly insane. I loved it. So uh, Yeah, there's, there's, like, all of those, like, cool, like, highlights in that that part down in the middle part. Um, it's, like, it's, like, it's really pops out and then also around the part where like the the end the top mm. of the elephant trunk where it's like you get those brighter highlights that are just so yeah. cool yeah one thing I did as well was I um so I selected I have like an action set in photoshop and I selected the brighter stars and then I inverted that to then select the smaller stars and I brought the smaller stars back a little bit to kind of push you can see here that there's a train of these brighter stars that kind of go through the trunk from oh, top yeah. to bottom and it kind of catches your eye a little bit. I think it's more when it's actually tilted the other way. Um, but I brought back the smaller stars a little bit. I could probably even do it a little bit more um, to bring out that train of kind of whitish stars. And I thought that was pretty cool. I think that's probably my favorite part of the photo. Something else I did actually, um, I put the, so the way I combined it was through pixel math and I put all the color channels through pixel math and it came through and it was like really heavily saturated and it looked amazing. But um, for me, like I tend to go with more of a pastel look. I haven't really developed a style with mono yet, but I tend to go for kind of those more subtle colors. So I kind of dialed that back with curves and some color masks and ended up with this. So that's the story. <laughs> Behind no, it, really. I it's it's great. It's like it's it's really it's it's sort of like two tones, but within those two tones, you have so much variation that mm. it's like it's it's it really it, it's really it's a really nice palette. Um, oh, I'm so glad you like. It. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was super cool. Super cool. Okay, so I'm gonna share my image here. I'm Let so excited. Do share screen. Okay, there we go. I love these colors. Oh, thank you. They yeah. work so well together. The like the like the way I've got so many things going through my mind. The blue drips onto the pink. You aced that. Thank you. Yeah, that it took me stunning. it took me a few tries. I think this is my third one. And the I'll show you the first one just to give you an idea of like how just mm. subtle changes can make all the difference. And the definition, and you know um, you've, how you've got the elephant strung and then you've kind of got that middle-ish pinkish bit with a lot going on. Yep. <laughs> That's how I'm going to describe it. That looks so sharp. So I it's used, so, I, so I did a... I did a lot of processing on this, actually more than mm. I typically do, but it just, it just, mm. like I said earlier, it just seemed like the data could handle it. Like, so yeah. I did like a lot of like, I, well, um, going starless, like running, running like a mic style of sharpening, which is, I think we've talked about before, which is a high pass filter in Photoshop yeah, yeah, on yeah, yeah, the yeah. starless, then like adding the like adding a pseudo luminance so like putting all of the narrowband channels together but making it 
uh, loom and adding that as mm. a luminance layer, sharpening it again, then like yeah, taking out all of the stars from what is now like everything combined and then yeah, putting yeah, yeah. these new stars on top and then sharpening it one more time. And it just like every not time I was like, say. this is not going to work. It's going to fall apart. And then it just like kept going. And I was like, oh, it just still looks OK. There was a top part of dust in mine that just I didn't really feel like it worked with the composition. But this lines up so well, like the way you've cropped it, like you've got the trunk coming up and then you've got that dark bit of dust kind of bending into it. That dust looks so dreamy. Like that's the only word I can think of right now. Like. It looks so, so clean. I feel like the, the dark nebula is kind of, it's like a second subject of the yeah. image. It's like in the background, but it's not in the background. And that's why I um, like composed um, my photo in the way that I did when I was actually imaging. Like I saw the dark piece of dust and I was like, I've got to get that in. But even cropping it further, like that looks awesome it looks so so good and i actually never noticed before but on the left to the top of the trunk there's that little bit of like palish whitish pink dust coming off yeah there. yeah i love that, that thing that looks awesome it I really looks that. like it's like fading off into the background it does. i'm sure literally in space that's behind you know it's like it's <laughs> it back is, there yeah, yeah. So thank you, Helena, for for suggesting this collaboration. You know, this is our our second one. We did a Cygnus Wall one, which you can watch uh, from it was over a year ago now. And then yeah, uh, this one so. has been great too. Yeah, it's been so amazing, and it's been so great to see like the same data from different people with different processing techniques coming together and creating two very different images. And I just think that shows different processing styles, and it's one of the things I love about Astro. So yeah. Thank you for working with me on it. It's been amazing. All right. Well, thank you so much, Helena. Yeah, this was this was really fun, and um, we're definitely going to do this again. <laughs>